Thanks for being with me. This is a somatics practice where we are going to explore gravity, specifically how can we make friends with gravity? And I say that because from the moment we're born, gravity is the force that we are fighting, right, to some degree, because we need to keep ourselves upright. And what does gravity do? It takes us down. But we also have to recognize that the other definition of gravity is taking us back into our center. So in somatics, one of the principles that I use is using gravity to create force. So in other words, to create movement. And with that, we create force either by pushing into gravity. So think as you're walking and you step into the ground and you can feel your foot push into the ground. That's creating force, which gets muscles to engage. So that's one way we may be creating that gravitational force. But the other way we do it is one foot pushes down when we take a step, the other one lifts up. And that's asking different muscles to respond when we pull away from gravity. So that's a, a very basic um, understanding and principle that I practice in somatics and let's put it in our body. So we'll be, um, we'll be down on the ground this whole time. Please feel free to put more padding down if you want. Although one of the beautiful things about gravity, if we have a little bit more solid surface is it helps us to get feedback. So we come down, feel free to hug your knees into your chest. Roll your knees around and let gravity have its way with you. So knees can be bent with feet on the floor. You might even let your knees fall together or take your legs along if it's comfortable for you. Check to see, do you need something underneath your head? Would you like something underneath your head? And we connect with gravity on the breath out. So however you're breathing, just recognize your breath out, whether it's through your nose or your mouth. And begin to make it a little bit longer and slower. Oftentimes we feel gravity through our bones, the weight of your bones. But explore the idea in your own body of where is your center? And instead of gravity pulling us into the ground all the time, can we use it to return to our own center of our being? Where do you see that center? And we'll do a movement with the legs first that will help to show us this idea of pushing into and pulling away from gravity in order to create sensation or create force. Take your feet into constructive rest, so about as wide as your hips, and feet not too far out to where your back is arching, not too close to where the back is pressing into the ground. We'll start with the left hip. That's the one that's facing you here. And this is what I call walking in place. So begin to think of your left shin, feel your left shin and the left foot. As you feel ready, push the foot down into the ground and the shin slightly forward and then release it. So we can do this to our breath if you'd like. You can push as you breathe in and release into gravity as we breathe out. So think of this gravitational force as creating the force as you breathe in or pushing into the foot and pushing the shin forward and then landing back in your center. So no longer fighting it as you breathe out. Just the left side, shin and foot active and releasing. So right now we're pushing into the ground with the foot and pushing forward with the shin. And notice what's happening with the pelvis. Maybe you even want to set your hands on your pelvis. Can you sense the way that the left hip is lifting and coming slightly forward? It's switching so that the right hip is coming slightly higher towards your armpit, maybe even, and pressing into the ground. 
So now instead of pushing into gravity with the foot, think of that lift hip and see if you can lift your left hip and make the same movement or similar movement. So lifting the left hip, again, you can do that on the inhalation. And there may still be a sense of the foot pushing down into the ground, but you're initiating the movement by lifting away with gravity. And think of when you're walking, one foot is lifting up and the other one is pushing into the earth. So this is the foot lifting up, in this case, the hip. So we started by pushing into the foot, pushing the shin forward, and we went into lifting the hip. Somewhere in between these two is the place where you can create the greatest range of motion, the most mobility, with the most comfort. So it might be a combination of slightly pushing down into the left foot and also lifting the left hip. But find that, the greatest range of motion with the most pleasure. So this incorporates the pelvis and the legs. What happens if we want to bring the upper body into it? Center left shoulder blade. And now, as you're pushing into the foot or, and or lifting the left hip, press your left shoulder blade into the ground. So push in with the left shoulder blade to create force. Now notice how your whole left side will arch and then release. I like to let my head turn towards the left shoulder. That's just an option. Imagine you're walking and you're walking with just the left leg right now, taking it for a walk. Take a few more here, pushing shoulder blade perhaps too. And maybe stop and hold that last one. Notice how much force you're putting into pushing into the ground with your foot, with your shoulder blade, how much force in lifting the left hip. And as you're holding, maybe release even just 25% of that force and see if you can maintain that height but with a little more comfort. And then let that drop down, relax. So we'll be switching sides. I'm gonna to turn towards you so you can see. <clears throat> but before we switch sides, take your legs out, shake them out for a moment, and take that magic moment of just feeling the left side and the right side. Can you sense any difference in the foot, the leg, the hip? So we take this approach and, and uh, come into gravity as a friend, we will start to notice these subtle differences in awareness of how our body feels when we're moving mindfully and voluntarily by pushing into and pulling away. And what do you feel? Is one leg longer, shorter, tighter, looser? And let's try the other side, very simple movement. Come back into constructive rest. So the low back is long with that slight arch. Begin to just sense your right foot first. Where is your right foot? Can you feel where the heel and the ball of the foot are touching the ground? Come all the way up the leg to the hip. But initiate the movement by pushing the foot into the ground and pushing the shin bone slightly forward. Or maybe you wanna visualize your kneecap on this one. We're pushing foot down. And watch as you push the foot down how the hip responds. Pushing into gravity. And then just releasing. If you're doing it to the breath, the effort, the pushing, creating, that force as you breathe in and landing as you breathe out. I say it's just the breath out is when you just let gravity have its way with you or let it fully support you versus that little bit of fight and pushing into it. Something you wanna check since we already did the left side is can you keep the left side quiet and work on just the right side now? So sometimes that left side is gonna Try to use the force of gravity to help out, but it gets to take a vacation. And then let's switch and visualize your right hip. And instead of pushing into the ground, pull away by lifting the right hip and drawing it forward. 
So you might even touch your right hip bone. Think, lift it up into your hand and press it forward. Can you sense how that is a different way to initiate this movement than to push into the ground? We're lifting away from the ground. Just another way to create force. And the left hip will respond. It will pull up and go deeper into the ground as the right hip lifts. It has to. Again, once we've tried both movements, pushing into and pulling away, find the combination of pushing into the right foot, lifting the right hip. Any combination, maybe it's just one or the other that feels the best for your body but allows you to make a nice, smooth, comfortable movement. It's a simple concept, but what this concept does is it helps us to release muscle patterns where we're stuck. And stuck muscles are muscles that cause pain. So we start to recognize where are we gripping? Can you feel your muscles grip as you push down or lift up? And can you feel them relax? Let's add the shoulder in. So sense your right shoulder blade. Push the right shoulder blade into the ground as you lift the right hip and or push into the right foot. Push that shin forward. Is it a push or a pull? And can you feel the way that your muscles are responding? Sometimes the muscles respond by getting active and getting longer. They can also get active and get shorter. But either way, we're activating the muscles and then releasing them. Release into gravity. You can let your head turn towards your right shoulder if you'd like, keeping the weight of the head relaxed. Take one or two more on that right side. And pause, feel free to hug your knees and your chest and roll around a little bit. So I purposely picked this simple walk in place motion so that we can really can, can experience this idea of how do we make friends with gravity? How do we let gravity bring us towards our center as well as create force to move? Pause for a moment, take your legs out long. And now see yourself from the toes the balls of the feet, the heels, all the way up through the hips. We're going to do that same movement, just alternating sides. But visualize the places first. Placing the feet on the floor. Back in constructive rest. So if you want to start with the right hip, you can push the right foot, lift the right hip, press the right shoulder blade into the ground, let your head roll maybe. And then relax. And then the left side. And so even though I'm alternating too, I'm not dropping both legs. It's not the whole rotation of like a windshield wiper movement. I'm doing one side at a time and then releasing completely in between. So there's this moment when gravity is just holding you and you're suspended in gravity and the bones are holding you and the muscles are resting onto the bones. And then we voluntarily activate again to press forward. So just giving you this opportunity to familiarize yourself with what it feels like to engage muscles. And are there any that don't want to release? So continuing with this, if you want to add a little bit more stretching in, as you're pressing into the right foot and are lifting the hip, you could slide your right shoulder right arm overhead as you press the shoulder blade down and then come back left side same thing slide the arm as you can continue on I want you to think about this idea of going up and how slowly can you go up with the hip focus on just the hip that's lifting how slowly can you go up and pull away from the ground. 
So there is a sense of pulling. And also with the shoulder blade in the foot, how much force or pressure do you have to put in with pushing down into the ground if you're doing that? And how can you control the speed of the pushing down so it's not sudden, it's not jerky? A little at a time, lifting and pushing to create that sensation And then let's switch into the other role of gravity, this coming back home into the center of ourselves with the exact same motion. Focus on how softly and slowly you can come down and land. So feel yourself at that full point of, it might feel like extension of the muscles, hugging the bones, the activation, and little by little, coming back down into the ground to that complete release. So you can even think of yourself releasing 10% at a time. How softly and slowly can you go down and land back on the ground? Take one or two more and we're gonna flip it over and just do one other movement today. Pause. This time in our rest position, come on to your front side since that's where we're going. You can rest one cheek or the other on the ground or your chin or your forehead. Just take your arms to your sides. Kind of like in a cactus position, wherever your shoulders are comfortable, feel free to shift your hips side to side or jelly roll the legs. So a whole new invitation for gravity to hold you as we're now on the front side of the body and new feedback. What can you feel? Whatever you feel where your body or your clothing are touching the ground what kind of feedback can that give you? Are there places where you're gripping or holding yourself away? Can you completely fall at the moment? And I'll encourage you to use your breath for this one. You might even notice as you're breathing in how there's this feeling of the front body pushing into the ground. So the buoyancy of the breath meets the ground and there's a natural response of pushing in. The pushing in is coming from the lungs expanding. And it's a pushing in and a slight forward. And then we, we take that into movement. So next time you breathe in, just slightly lift up. So I'm not lifting the neck. I'm keeping the neck in a neutral position. I'm going to let the breath float me up and let the breath slowly and softly allow me to land. And when you land, if you want to turn your head to one side onto one cheek, you can. And then inhaling back up again and exhaling onto the opposite cheek. So we're starting very passively, organically letting the breath lift us. And it might barely lift your cheek off the ground or barely lift your head. Feel the buoyancy of the breath float you up and forward. You might even pause for just a moment at the top of the breath in. And then breathe out. Completely release. Take one more like that, just letting the breath initiate the movement. So you'll feel that compression or resistance of the front body pushing into the ground, just like you were pushing your foot into the ground earlier to move the hips and the legs. 
So what if we wanted to add just a little bit more to this? Sense just your right leg from the toes to the hip. And as you breathe in and start to feel your torso floating up, push just the right top of the foot into the ground, the, maybe the thigh. So you're gonna, you can do even just that first a few times, even reach back there and feel when you push the top of the foot and the thigh into the ground. If you're getting cramps, by the way, you can roll your toe under, press through the heel first, and then try it again. But push the thigh into the ground and notice how you'll get an engagement or an action in the hamstrings and the, and the buttocks muscles. So now as you lift, push the thigh into the ground, just the right side, lift up and then turn onto your right cheek. So turn away from that right leg and rest, rest the muscles through the right leg, rest your right cheek, the heart, and switch sides. Visualize the whole length of the left leg from the toes to the hip. See what it feels like to push the top of the thigh into the ground, maybe the top of the foot. Can you sense the way that that is gonna create action in the back of the left leg and in the buttocks? And then inhale, float up, feel that action in just the left side, right side's on holiday. And then breathe out. Float down slowly. Right side, press the foot into the ground, the thigh bone. Just the right side active. You can feel your gluteal muscles and your hamstrings. And we come down and we relax all the back muscles, the weight of the head rests, and all the muscles in the right leg. And continue to switching side to side. Are you able to release on the breath out? One of the images that comes to mind for me when I do this push in and pull away, it would be like a dandelion seed or even a leaf falling. We watch a leaf spin in the, in the air and it goes up slowly and then it falls slowly. Not crashing down with gravity, but a soft landing, complete landing. And creating just enough force in the legs, pushing down with one leg, turning the head the opposite direction, and landing once again. And we're creating, we're doing a back bend here, right? Spinal extension. So the legs are coming in to activate one at a time, but the lifting isn't about using our back muscles as much as we're initiating from the breath. And if you want to come up a little bit higher, push into your arms just a little bit. Still initiate from your breath. But now, what does it feel like if you begin to push into your arms as well? Push the arms down, one leg activates, whichever way you're turning, the opposite leg. So you're gonna get up higher, but does it still feel good pushing the arms down? And continue to just explore this. How much pushing or pulling do you need? So the pulling is the lifting up with the breath. The pushing is one thigh or the other, and maybe the arms. How much force do you need to create in gravity to find your end range of motion? And what does it feel like to use maybe just a little bit less force? Can you still get as high, but have a more pleasant experience? Last one, let's take a hold. Inhale, let your breath float you up. If you'd like, you can press both legs into the ground, even reach your big toes back. So feel both leg lines in the back side, your buttocks active, push into your arms as well as you'd like, as if you'd like. Where can you feel the muscles active? And sometimes we get to the point where we can not only tell that they're active, that we're creating force, but also do they feel short or long? So can you sense the way that the muscles in the backside are short and active? So 
Deep breathing. One more breath in. And breathe out. Completely release. We're going to roll back onto our backside just to finish up. And stretch the back out after that. The one I like to close with that is this idea of gravity and coming into center is our big and small. So as you breathe in, sometimes I call it the somatic yawn, reach through your arms and your legs, make yourself as big as you can and also push your arms and legs into the ground. So you're not only long, you're engaged, you're creating that force. And then as you breathe out, just release completely. In that long space, you're still long, you're still big and expansive, but you're released. The next, take an exhalation and squeeze your legs in. You might lift your head, squeeze everything into a little ball as tight as you can. And then release again. And I like to release with my knees bent. You can also take them out long. Just release. We'll do that two more times. Inhale, full stretch. Push your arms and legs into the ground, the backs of the calves, the shoulder blades, the backs of the hips. Feel everything tighten. You might even tighten the muscles in your face. Draw your forehead down towards your eyes, your nose up towards your eyes. Crinkle your cheeks. Squeeze your lips. Everything squeezing. And then breathe out. Land. Let gravity befriend you. And then breathe out. Squeeze yourself into a ball as tight as you can. If it doesn't feel good for the neck to come up, just do the legs and the shoulders can come up too. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze as tight as you can. Keep breathing. And then exhale. Release. See where you land. Once you stop squeezing, where does your body go? Last one, full stretch. You can even take your legs a little wider. Think of like a five point star pushing into the ground, the back of the leg line, the arms, anything that's touching the ground, push in just like you pushed in with your heels. You might wanna pull away too. Lift your back and arch it. You might notice the way your back is arching. So you can pull away with gravity, tighten your face if you want. Take a few breaths there. And the next breath out. Land in your center. Feel yourself from the center and feel that center supported and all the way out through your arms and legs into the periphery. Last one, squeezing in. Draw your legs in as you exhale. You can wrap your arms around the backs of the thighs, your shins. Tuck your chin, squeeze in. Draw your shoulders towards your knees if you'd like. I like to even draw my abdominal wall in towards the spine, taking a breath into the chest. So purposely create force and tension in the body and breathe out. Befriend gravity, let it hold you. Take a position that's completely comfortable. You can place your hands anywhere on your body. So there's some things we know about gravity. First of all, like I said, when we're first born, it's this force that we have to reckon with. And we really do the, our whole lives. But recognizing the importance of it, we say gravity grounds us, right? And if we're in a, had the opportunity to be in a zero gravity field, it's, it, it wouldn't work for us because gravity is what makes our muscles engage, right? We just found out we can do that voluntarily but it keeps the muscles strong so they don't atrophy, get too weak. Gravity also keeps our bones strong. So say hello to your bones. Any weight bearing we do into our bones keeps the bones healthy. And the more we can learn to trust and feel and see ourselves through our bones, the less the muscles have to work. So even as you're resting right now, 
Let the muscles relax onto the bones and feel the way the structure of the bones will hold you in gravity. Whatever position you've cho chosen for yourself. Sense your breath first before you move. The levity of the breath as you breathe in, that lifting that naturally occurs. And the gravity of the breath as you breathe out, that coming back into your center, downward, the sense of support. Levity and gravity in your breath, it's always there to remind us. And you're welcome to stay here as long as you'd like and take your time rolling to your side. I hope that this practice helped you to make friends with your body and gravity and see if you can take some of these practices of pushing and pulling away into your day, whether it's when you're walking or even sitting in a chair are you pushing into your sit bones are you pulling away from your sit bones there's all kinds of things we can do with that are you pulling away with the crown of your head when you're sitting so play with it a little bit and see how these concepts can help you to find comfort in your body or think of using gravity to your advantage instead of your disadvantage to help to hold you up with just the right amount of force thanks for joining me Peace, joy, love, and light.